everyone. I am here with a true progressive from the state of Texas. Her name is Sema Hernandez. She is currently running to be the Democratic Party nominee in 2020. You all know her from 2018 when she actually ran against Beto O'Rourke in the Democratic Party primary, and she actually got 23.7% of the vote. So she's surging. She's a strong progressive, perhaps the true progressive from Texas. And I have her on the show to talk about her 2020 campaign. Sema, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Now, thank you for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. And I've been really interested in your campaign because here's the thing. There's a lot of people that ran in 2018 that are now choosing to run again. And after seeing and hearing from all of you about how difficult it is to run for Congress and you ran for the Senate, my question is, what made you want to run again? Because, I mean, you have to be tired at this point. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, it, it is exhausting, but I truly believe that the people of Texas and the people of this country and around the world are worth fighting for and running on a, a peace uh, campaign on a platform that is unapologetically human and focusing on the issues that affect all of us. That's most important. And being a single mom of four kids, it's certainly not an easy task to do, but one that I'm willing to do because it's it's the moral obligation I'm choosing to take on for all the right reasons. Yeah, and that's absolutely commendable. Um, can you talk about what your core issues are? Because the way that I always see it is if I were to run for Congress or get elected, I wouldn't know what to focus on because there's so many things that we have to fix. So what do you think would be like the three primary things that you would be fighting for in Congress? Environmental justice is one that we need to focus on extremely. I'm a fence line resident here in Pasadena, where it's a, um, a condensed part of the petrochemical industry in the state of Texas. And so that's something that I would focus on along with uh, having a, uh, a booming economy that is surrounding um, or is, is created around uh, the Green New Deal and healthcare. And of course, you know, ending the war economy is something that's extremely important to um, to this country and to the world because we are the biggest contributor to uh, greenhouse emissions that contribute to global warming. Yeah, and that's absolutely commendable because I like this because, you know, when people run for Congress, for the Senate, for the House, a lot of people assume, well, you know, that's not going to be my representative. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't donate if I live in Oregon, for example. But the great thing is that you're fighting for these things that as progressives, we all care very deeply about. And one thing that made me a little bit angry is that a lot of people kind of look at Beto O'Rourke and they say, oh, well, he's running for president. Why not just run for the Senate? But we already have someone running for the Senate who's actually a real progressive who supports Medicare for all. You're the real deal. So the problem, though, is after Beto O'Rourke initially kind of signaled support for your campaign, he then kind of flipped and signaled support for the corporate Democrat in the race. Talk a little bit about that, because one theme that we're seeing around the country as more and more progressives run is that anytime they start to pick up momentum, the establishment steps in and throws in their own corporate Democrat to try to stop the progressive from winning. Talk about that dyna dynamic here, because it's absolutely something that's prevalent in this race. Yeah, well, in 2018, we saw that our campaign was was not really taken seriously, but you know, we fought really hard and we came in at 23 point whatever percent and we did it on $4,000 campaigning statewide. Wow. It was huge. And it was unheard of. It was remarkable. And it was literally groundbreaking what we did as the first time candidate ever running uh, as a Latina decolonized indigenous person supporting a very progressive platform. It was unheard of. So then we, we took that and we met with O'Rourke and, you know, we tried to figure out how we can work together but the one thing I wanted was Medicare for all for him to sign it while he was in Congress and he refused. So we went back and forth. And in that process, I joined the Poor People's Campaign, became the Texas co-chair for the Texas Poor People's Campaign, organized and uh, trained people for civil disobedience and did all that stuff. And then came back to the table with O'Rourke and he finally said, I'll support Medicare for all. And he said to me, well, what are you going to be doing? I said, I'm going to run against John Cornyn. I just reiterated it to him. Um back in September mm -hmm. after I gave him the endorsement after he said that he would support Medicare for all. And for the first time ever, his, his uh, polling went up um, in, you know, since he started running for office against Ted Cruz. So we, we realized that our endorsement carried a lot of weight specifically in our marginalized communities for them to come out and support him. Um, so when I saw that he supported my primary opponent, who was handpicked by Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, it baffled me because the last thing that we need is more incrementalism, more war. We need a, an actual health care plan that takes care of every single human being on, in this country. 
And um, I know that these other candidates that are running for office that are being propped up by corporate by the corporate establishment are not going to support these key pillars of our um, of our progressive platform. So yes, you know it's it's something that happens, and they're just you know playing uh, politics with our lives. And I'm as many people in the state of Texas and around this world, we're sick and tired of people playing with our lives like that. Like we're expendable just for their own profit and their own gain. Yeah, that's the most frustrating thing, I think, because you see that there's this real urgency for a number of issues. I mean, people are dying 30 to 40,000 every single year due to a lack of health insurance. We have less than 12 years now to act when it comes to climate change, according to the IPCC. So this wheeling and dealing for endorsements and whatnot, it just people see it and it comes off as disingenuous. And you've always been the person who has spoken truth to power in texas and i'm really happy that you're running again because i feel like if anyone is going to represent progressives it's going to be you it's not going to be Beto o'rourke because i think he's kind of shown his cards now and that he's not really too progressive and he's more career-minded because he's running for president i mean you could be running for president right now right but you're choosing to fight and take on john cornyn um so i want to go back to what you said there because you said you raised four thousand correct well, I raised a little bit over 4000 but I, I actually literally campaigned on $4,000. And you got 23.7%. I need of people to just... Voters, yes. I need people to realize what she accomplished. That's almost unfathomable. Like, it seems like that's impossible, but she did it. So if you think that, you know, a progressive who doesn't take corporate PAC money is someone who, you know, isn't ever going to win, is it difficult? Yes, but can she win? I think she kind of demonstrated that she has what it takes if she got a quarter of a million voters with 4,000. Like, that's that's mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. So imagine if she were the nominee, what she could do. Absolutely. And the one thing that we we do want to reiterate as part of our campaign is in 2018, we didn't get any endorsements. Uh, what we did is we got volunteers that stepped up and did the unthinkable. Um, and they were not paid. They were volunteering because they believed in our campaign, our platform, and our message. And that's one of the most important things is to connect with your voter on, on a personal level because you're carrying their voice with you to the Senate or to Congress or to city council. And one of the things that our campaign did in 2018 that is doing in 2020 is we are working in coalition with other candidates across this country um, and locally across the state. So I am teaming up with as many people as possible because my mission is to flip the state of Texas blue and do it in a way that it's not just the seat I'm running for. It's congressional seats, city council, county commissioner's court. We're going to flip Texas all the way and uh, bring the progressive change that has been uh, literally in <laughs> waiting in, in the back for us to take charge. And I myself am, am really hopeful that something great is going to happen in 2020. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with our presidential election, which, you know, if Bernie won, it would be great. Um, but it's it starts at home. Yeah. And I want to reiterate that, that we, it starts at home in politics. All politics is local. And so we should be voting, um, not just in presidential races or midterm elections, but we should be voting for city and local elections as well. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with that. Um, so let me put you on the spot a little bit. So I want to throw out some policies and I want to get a yes or no, or maybe on whether or not you support them. Um, and I think you're probably already decided on all of these, so this should be relatively easy. Medicare for all. Yes. Tuition-free public colleges and universities. Yes. Student loan debt cancellation. Absolutely, yes. Oh, I like that. Uh, Green New Deal. Yes. Ranked choice voting. Yes. Pardons for Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, reality winner, and Julian Assange. Hands down, yes. Oh, wait, actually, that's more of a presidential. But <laughs> if you support that, that's still good. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, reparations for American descendants of slavery. Yes. Um, let's see. Public financing of all elections. Absolutely, yes. It would make it a hell of a lot easier for candidates <laughs> like me to get elected as well. Absolutely. Um, abolishing the Electoral College. Yes. Ending the filibuster. Ending the filibuster maybe or filibuster to... reform like something in that sphere yeah i definitely don't want to stand around listening to ted cruz <laughs> <Every cat in that>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm getting flashbacks to that now um let's see here 
a universal basic income that supplements our existing social safety net. Mm, can it be in conjunction? Um, yes, yes. So it would be on top of what we already offer. So it wouldn't replace it. It would be um, in addition to that. Okay, in addition, yes, because I think replacing it is something that it's a Republican ploy to get rid of social safety net. Totally agree. You're, you're basically like in my mind now. Um, <laughs> okay, a federal jobs guarantee. Yes. Uh, closing all of our military bases and ending U.S. imperialism. Ending U.S. imperialism, yes. Closing military bases, yes. Or transferring them in a different way, transforming them in a different way. Instead of using them to deploy missiles and, you know, set up bombs in the middle of the night in places like Yemen um, or Libya or Israel or, you know, <laughs> Palestine. I mean, that's, yeah. that's something that uh, is something I don't want to continue. But um, revitalizing our military to actually do what, they're, what, what we want them to do to build a green new deal infrastructure, rebuild places that we've destroyed and, um, help rebuild Puerto Rico. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a no brainer, Yeah, but definitely not for war. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of went to the next one that I wanted to ask, um, statehood for DC and Guam and a referendum for Puerto Rico so they can have self-determination. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. So I think that's pretty much all of the main things. The one last thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, protecting pro BDS speech. You don't necessarily have to endorse PD BDS per se, but so long as you'd stand up for people that do support it and you wouldn't enforce these pro BDS um, or these anti BDS pledges that we're seeing around the country. Would you? I would do both. That's great. See, okay. I already do both, so we're good. Okay, so um, I'm getting the sense that you're not afraid to like take politically um, almost volatile s stances, which is great. <laughs> yeah, or on Venezuela. I mean, on Venezuela, it's to leave them the hell alone. They have elections and they did what they did. And there's no need for us to meddle specifically to gain control of the petrochemical industry there. Yeah. Now, let me ask you one thing that isn't policy related, but it's more related to politics. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you're elected to Congress and we all know that there's going to be immense pressure from you. You're going to get attacked by Fox News every single day. You'll be the new target. You know, you'll you'll maybe take away some attention from AOC. Um, but you're going to be forced to try to work with the Democratic Party that's going to silence you by offering you deals, offering to co-sponsor pieces of legislation if you don't do this and that or don't endorse. How do you work with that? Like, how do you, how do you try to subvert that pressure and still remain true to your progressive principles? Well, if uh, 2018 was any indication of what I'm willing to walk away from, um, that, that should be clear enough. It's I'm, I'm willing to walk away from any kind of celebrity status because I'm not a celebrity. I'm running to be a public servant and I don't want to be treated as a celebrity or, and I don't want to be a target and uh, try to try to, um, you know, have, have people like Fox, not people, but uh, corporations like Fox News try to throw me off my game because I have other things to focus on. And capitulating to the Democratic Party is something that I'm not going to do um, for any kind of political gain or any kind of money that they would throw my way. Um, I'm, I'm here and I'm running to be elected for the people and do what the people of Texas want me to do and listen to the constituents across the country and hear what's most important to them and act on it not just sit and wait until an opportunity strikes that I can capitalize on politically. So I'm just going to do the work. Love it. That's a perfect answer. So I'm sure many people will be sold. Tell us what we can do if we want to help you, um, if we live in Texas and if we don't live in Texas, and tell us where we can go to donate to you. Well, um, if you don't live in Texas, uh, what are you waiting for? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's I mean, the more people that move to Texas, the better chance that we can get to overturn certain laws in the state of Texas state legislature. Uh, but yes, definitely go to SEMA for Texas dot com or go to Act Blue and look me up at SEMA Hernandez or SEMA for Texas 2020. Um, donate whatever you can sign up to volunteer on our website. But yeah, SEMA for Texas dot com. That's where I'm at. OK, perfect. And. Are we able to phone bank for you if we live outside of Texas? Absolutely. Phone bank. Um, I don't know. Do uh, host an event. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, house party I'm or something? House party. Yeah, I can yeah. definitely, you know, make my way. I traveled across Texas. I can travel across the country by car and video myself. I just will never use the live stream when I'm at a dental office or at a barbershop. <laughs> 
I like it. I like it a lot. And um, I think that you will keep people supporting you that way um, by not live streaming dental appointments or haircuts or whatever the case. May be. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually take pictures and I live stream at local coffee shops, uh, business, small business or family owned restaurants. And I, I want to to, you know, highlight the places in which I like to to hang out in. Yeah, and that's not normal. Not that's, yeah, that's that's a little bit more normal though to to do normal things like that. Um, that's what a lot of organizers do is go to restaurants, not necessarily the dentist's office. So um, <laughs> thank you for being normal in that regard. <laughs> so thank you so much. And let me just make a quick pitch for Sema. Um, she was able to accomplish a lot for four thousand dollars. Imagine what she could accomplish with ten thousand. Imagine what she could accomplish if she was able to raise a hundred thousand. So it's tough. Everybody is donating to presidential candidates currently and other candidates. But if you could just chip in and donate whatever you can, um, and if not money, maybe time, you could get someone like Sema in Congress to represent you. Imagine the influence that she would have over the Democratic Party, over the country. It'd be phenomenal. So chip in and um, help her out if you can. So Sema, thank you so much for coming on the program. All right. Thanks, Mike, for having me here. We'll talk soon. Yes, we will.